I can't believe you all guessed wrong. There's one reason I would accept a mirror between Crackity and Cool. Because HRE is broken. <laughs> Crackity, shut up. I'm on the mic right now. <laughs> Cool's favorite Civ. Crackity's most hated in a mirror. Oh, battle the Germans on the Germans. Let's get to it. We're on gorge of all maps. Crackity is going to be in the teal down on the south side of this. Meanwhile, Core to the north side playing in the orange. Mm. Interesting thought as well because HRE mirrors used to be about rushing castle, but I don't know if that's the case anymore. I feel like the aggro comes out so quick, you can actually just blunt your opponent. Archers plus Spearman rushing across the field can screw someone over at Rush's castle. Especially for someone in Crackley's position, he got a forward gold spawn here. This puts him a little bit more at risk. Now, one thing that is interesting is Crackley has been clearly signing up for Core's coaching, but he got the outdated build from Core. Crackley done the double scout opener that Core is renowned for. I'd actually say it's his signature at this point. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't do it. And I'm kind of wondering why. Considering that most of the games historically we've watched of Core, especially those before the, the buffs even came through, he focused on double scout all the time. It's a little bit surprising. I guess maybe if his goal is to put this into a faster castle timing, that makes sense, right? Because if you're going fast castle, your opponent just sacrificed one villager. In a mirror matchup, that's actually a really big deal. Especially when you consider that an average villager gathers 40 resources a minute. Then when you consider... Eco upgrades over time, then also the fact that you've got the Holy Inspiration for 40% more. Let's give it a 50% increase because that's fair, right? Like you're going to gather more with those eco techs coming through. So that villager is going to be worth by four minutes in the game an extra 60 resources a minute. Yeah. So that's going to equate, usually with like Castle Age being around minute eight, minute nine, if you rush it, that's going to equate an extra 240 resources, which is a knight advantage if you think about it, if they both castle at the same time. So Arkin down the way. Beautiful placement for Core as well, actually. You got the gold, the wood, food. I mean, this is a perfect example of why I've said it might be interesting for the devs to explore mirror maps. Because when you're in a mirror like this, it's actually so GG when you get a spawn like Crackity's compared to Core's. Core's is so much better. He got the retracted gold. His deer are close enough to push in. Like, there's actually not much I look at Core's spawn with and say, oh, that's bad. Maybe the one thing that sucks a bit is I feel like the relics are a bit more biased towards Crackity, right? You can see they've kind of gravitated around him. But outside that, this is thumbs up for Orange. Someone goes, mine work? Uh, no, because these guys like to win, right? They, they have to like winning because Crackity at the time of recording is, let's have a look, 41st in the world. And Coach Cool, who needs to prove he's worth the coaching, needs to get high rank. All right, because if he doesn't get high rank, he can't afford to pay for the old people's home for his mama babushka, and he can't afford to get himself some soup. So he's ranked 38th in the world right now. Arkin on the way in the backside for Cracky. Has at least got the berries, so I guess, you know, between getting all the sheep and then getting the berries, this could be a very good Burgrave game. It sounds wild to do, especially in a HRE mirror, but consider the food he's got at his, his disposal. He could potentially just end the game before Core even gets online. And here's the other thing, guys. If Core is clearly going for a cast stage rush, which I really do think he is, we're going to be looking at probably an imp rush because I know the type of player Core is. Core very often leans into one style of HRE. If he's going regnants, he's going relics into imp. Crackity can exploit that. He can crack it wide open. Especially when you do the raw maths on what he's got at his disposal now, right? So it's going to be 14 sheep at 250 a pop. So that is going to be a pretty lofty... What's that? 3,500 food? It's not too bad. Then on top of that, he's got the berries for an extra 1,500. So he has 5,000 food. You can probably get... If we do the maths fair on it, you're probably looking at, what, 30 minute arms at least from that? And he'll be adding in farms on the way as well. Instead, Crackley opening the stables though. Now that is interesting. Is that because he knows that his tech time is going to be worse? Second Prola also being pulled. That's going to be to buff the gold. 
This is a very early stables. We sometimes see this. And you're right. There was a ball play. Good eyes, Faplop. Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. That feels so unnecessary. Unfortunately, Core, cool. the perfect reaction. He sees the stables. He sees that there's going to be Horseman queued up. And he says, wait a second. No, I, I know what you're up to. Not today, sir. Oh, that's so unfortunate as well. Core, cool. that was a sick read. Scouting it so early is really important. If he scout on a delay, then this would already be bad for him. But he gets enough time to walk these up. He just needs to stab down the scout now. It doesn't feel good, but you need to hit him with all villagers. Instead, he decides to build more walls. <laughs> Guys. 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 Oh, no. I see a floor in Core's defense. <laughs> well, at least he's building a gate to get out. Unfortunately... Crackity should just be able to go in. Crackity should just be able to go in. Crackity. Jesus Christ, they both need to go. <laughs> it shouldn't work, but it does. This is like when someone tries to tell you they're going to build an amazing city and you invest in it, and then they just put like a Hollywood type, like 2D set to make it look real. Dive in, though. He finally realizes. So he goes in on this. Prolet is going to try to chain heal fruit. Not going to work out, though. Especially when you switch targets like this. What? Okay, that's wild. If he targeted the one horseman down, he would have got the kill. Second spin is going to come out now, though. An outpost being built up. And, you know, there's more on the way, guys. <laughs> He's not done yet. Crackity is now sending men at arms up here. Horsemen are going to be stuck inside in the meantime, though. So it looks like the scout and double horseman is going to go down. And... I can't help but feel Crackity probably could have just paused the men at arms and went for Castle. He is still going towards that tech up though. The idea behind still having these men at arms out and it being good though is that your opponent now has to contest with them when he goes relics, right? What a wild game. And no, he did not lose the prelate. The prelate is alive. <laughs> cool. Baited him to the maximum and then garrisoned him in the outpost. Yeah, you underestimate Coach Cool. If you want to know how to do that, you got to sign up for his coaching service. Or you just sign up for mine and I'll show you in the replay. Good idle time here. This is really well played by Crackity. As meany as this got, oh, he even keeps the scout alive. That's glorious. Regnitz is already in the way for him. Men at Arms also coming in. Uh, not the best way to fight with them, Crackity. Like at this point, there's just too many spears. It's a bad trade. You don't want to be diving in here. You can't force any more out of time, right? I think you're better off just waiting for the tech up. Instead, it continues in one by one. Cool. Should be dropping the stables now, right? Yeah, he's already got them prepped. So we are going to be seeing knights from both sides here. They both only have one stables. The food gathering is at least secure in the corner. I still don't like the fact he didn't just do a deer shop, though. A deer shove would have been a lot safer. You could argue that, you know, Crackity would have still got a fast tech up timing. But that's not true, right? Because of the double scout detail we mentioned. It would have been a little bit better for Core. So by some miracle, Core actually ends up teching up first. He pushes more villagers on it. So here we go. Prelate should be shifting out. The other negative I see in this game for Core is like the ball was nowhere near a relic. So he's having to make a long haul to get anywhere on this. And what the f Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Crackity grabs four. God of Thunder. No. I can't believe that. The timing on that. You'd think this guy was playing Delhi. All right. So as far as big differences go in an HRE mirror, it doesn't get much different than that. I cannot believe this. Four relics now on the way home. And because Core did not build any horsemen, he has no intercept chance here. This is simply going to be a four relic versus one game, which actually means that Core now has to be the aggressor. He can't just camp. He can't do his typical, I like Imperial, watch Imperial play. Because if he does that, Crackity will get there much quicker. Dude, I wasn't expecting that. I have God Vision, and Crackity distracted me so well I didn't notice he was on every relic. So imagine how Core felt in this game. That was so incredibly well played by Crackity. 
That's not like he's up against a pushover HRE player, right? Like, this is this is cause signature Civ. It's the one he's renowned for. Just made him look like a little kid getting bullied on the playground by an adult. Which, actually, that doesn't paint Crackety in a good picture because that means he beats up little kids. But No, no, no. That, that's accurate. He does keep being Gully Deckle right now. Crackety does beat up kids. Definitely not flipped out of context. And yeah, guys, Cora is definitely going in pure age, so he's just doing your atypical thing here. Whoo! I'm not the biggest fan of fast imp HRE on Gorge with one relic. I feel like you need at least two. The reason is that you need a cannon emplacement relic on both sides of the TC. Otherwise, you're very limited on where you can expand. Like if you drop a pass Swabi here, you're very quickly going to be out of range of protection, right? And although you can still get cannon placements, they're notably weaker. And yeah, you're right, Avali. Like, wait, I, I, I could have sworn I've seen this somewhere. Maybe this coach core Adney for coaching is actually cool. I know he likes to do this build a lot. Meanwhile, Crackley looks like he's actually prepping for war. But he's not building. So I'm a little bit confused as to what his goal is. He's got a thousand gold already. The food is lacking though. So if this is fast to imp, there's some big problems and question marks here. He is gathering on the berries now, just not in mass. There's a lot of wood being gathered as well. So it's possible we're going to be seeing farms added in soon. And, well, cool. It's going to pull the trigger. So Pounce the Swabian now on the way. And Crackety's build is starting to have the biggest, fattest, most confusing question mark next to it right now. Oh my God. Did he think he was going to get inted? I think he thought that this was going to be an all-in from Core. Which is weird because Crackney has played against Core more times than I can count on my hands. And even if I was an alien with eight arms, um, I wouldn't be able to count how many times he's faced off against Core on the Civ. So the fact that he reads this as needing to defend instead of needing to tech is very confusing to me. I'm so confused right now. I feel like Crackley had a big edge and he kind of threw it away here. I mean, he still has four relics, right? So, like, he's got some wiggle room here, but that wiggle room disappears very quickly against Pasta Swabia. This love hotel is insane. Your opponents are four TC effective right now. And you were already behind on economy because you built additional prelates. And yes, you do still get the gold if you put relics in tower. You do not get gold when you're running across the tower. So right now, this is painful. Long walk. Less gold coming in. In a game where he still needs more gold. So how do I feel about course chances now? I mean, it's not too bad of a position to find himself in, right? Like, he's still got the deer. He could have shoved this in, by the way. Like, I, this is kind of criminal. I, I am disgusted right now. 40% gathering speed buff missing. <laughs> The tough part as well is like he can't build additional prelates to come buff this up because he has one relic. He doesn't have insane gold income. So although Core's going to have like maybe a 10 eco lead by the time this starts to bounce out, I do still favor Crackety because well, A, Crackety has got four relics. Those relics are worth 160 gold each. Ergo, they're worth about four villages, 3.5 villages each. But on top of that, that resource, the gold, is kind of invaluable here, right? Considering that your opponent is going to be gathering gold without the buff very shortly, you're not going to have those same kind of impediments, impediments right? Like, you're a little bit better for it. And it means a lot when you consider all these elite techs cost an insane amount of gold, right? You want to get elite men at arms, that's 700 gold. You want to get the heavy maces, 200, that's another 500 between the two of them. You want to get elite army tactics, 700 gold again. So, imp reached. Core has managed to build up a 14 villager lead, but it will get no bigger. And this now starts to put a lot of pressure on Core because it means he has to play fast. The reason he has to play fast, by the way, is he will reach his peak first, but his opponent will not be far behind him. That's a problem. Because if you now both balance out 140 economy, the relics are the difference. Not just the relics. Sacred sites as well, not to mention Tithe Barns on the way. Everything looking up for Crackety. 
Taiwan's usually feels like such a big deal at this stage as well, right? With Radiant's gold, you have way too much gold, which means you can afford it. Usually what you're lacking is everything else. So this pads the difference, right? In a game where Crackly has practically got no food income, even Tithe Barnes is going to make the world a difference. It's an extra 160 food a minute, which means he's going to get four times the food he has right now. Interesting twist here, Lance Nectar, cool. Yeah, a little bit puzzling when you have one relic. Usually you see Lance Nectar as a focus point when you don't have much food and have a lot of gold. He should have a lot of food and not much gold. That's not really going to do much here either. <laughs> okay, that, that was beautifully done. <laughs> okay, that was sick from Crackity. He turned around the moment he knew the knight was in range of the Spiral Defense. That was sick. And we got a new defense coming in here. Cannon on the way. So very hard to just kind of trickle troops in. Core apparently is saving up for Imperial Age. I think he forgot he already got there. Yeah, in all seriousness though, I think he just... He's got to wait, right? Like, he's queuing up Horseman, but I don't even know if you want to queue Horseman yet. To me, what Core's doing, he's in holding pattern here. He needs to see something his opponent's doing so that he can get the counter ahead. Because if this turns into a blind, let's do this and see if it's right type play, you're doing that when you're already now economically behind. It's a losing play, right? Stone being gathered from Keep Drop as well. That should be coming in on the farmland clusters here just to kind of protect and allow him to extend. Other side of this, mass farms are on the way. And it looks like Crackley's left space for something here as well. I wonder what he's going to do in there. Looks like we might actually have a keep drop coming in from Crackley soon. I don't think you need it though, right? Like you've got four outpost relics potentially. So you just play relics out here. Yeah, there we go. Agreed. He's got enough space there for your beautiful little outpost as well if need be. Court looking to be Lord of the Stone. I mean, we did watch a game earlier where he gathered 4,000 stones, so we're kind of going that way again, aren't we? Ah, oh, look at that. The farms are fully beautiful, so no gaps for extra outposts. He'd want to put them around the edge anyway, right? Like, you'd usually put them over here and here. But right now, this game is looking very cozy for Crackity. Core has to make a move soon. Sacred Sight is going to be blocked from being captured here, so Crackity's not going to have that extra trickle gold, not to mention the counting time. Timer. Uh, he does already have two of these sacred sites, though, so that's adding quite a bit of pocket money in for Crackity. Right now, he's generating 520 gold a minute. Passively. Actually, these numbers are wrong. He's generating more than that. <laughs> it's okay, guys. That's another reason why we never show the religious statistics. I think you'll realize what it just done there. <laughs> it doesn't calculate excess gold from uh, Civ specific perks. So, for example, this number is actually double. He's not generating 320 gold. He's generating 640 and then 200 for sacred sites. So, right now, Crackly is getting 840 gold a minute passively. Outpost going up. I love this. Crackly's like, there's only one way he gets back in this game. And he's right. Core would need trade. As this game goes on, like both of them are going to run out of gold. They're playing fairly gold-heavy sieves. The difference, though, is that one has, as we highlight, on the relics alone, 640 passive gold a minute. Okay. So what is the winning comp for Core? Right now he's going for men at arms plus horsemen. I actually think if Crackity just spams men at arms, he wins. I mean, he's getting Spears in as well, which is fine up against the Horseman, but with his type of economy lead, he could just spam MAA only and win. Awesome. I'm just going to target down the villages. I mean, every little advantage you can get, right? But keep in mind, you're at a stage in the game where you don't really have infinite food trekking in. Sure, you've got the farms to give infinite food, but you haven't really built up this bank yet. So you haven't really got a stage where you can just throw away 20 Horsemen and shrug. You have to be kind of careful about this. Crackly has already queued up the heavy maces. Those upgrades are already in for core. Landstack upgrades also coming through. That is brave. So core is now saying, I either win now or I lose the game. 15 Landsnet queued up like that. That's going to be a third of his current army comp. 
I mean, it's a smart play, right? Your opponent's building spears and men at arms because for him, the game is very simple, very logical. Now, Crackley needs to reassess the situation. Funnily enough, if Crackley queues up Lansk himself, he wins. I just don't know if he's got the production yet for it. We're sitting at what? Five Raxes? That's pathetic in a game like this. Sorry, four. Even worse. Quick sell to get more food ready. Torches are out. And unfortunately, these were sprinkled upgrades. Yeah, it's crazy to think how much better this game would have looked for Crackety if he didn't waste time on these defenses. Remember, he queued up three different sprinkled emplacements. That's a problem. It means his relics are actually garrisoned in non-cannon defenses. Burn through damage also a bit too strong. He repairs barely working at this stage. And it looks like the attempt to go raiding by Crackety is going to fall flat. He needs to get home. He needs to defend because Core is forcing the matter. Imagine if Core just walked forward with Prelates right now. Just yoinked these away. How's Crackety losing this? Uh, he took too long in Castle. And then he needed to add in all the farms. He mass farmed instead of gradual farm transitions, right? You have to remember, Core had them set up for a very long time. He had like 15 farms very early. So the issue is mass. And Crackley, his biggest mistake was thinking he could just win this by going men at arms. He's right, he would have. If it wasn't for this detail here. Core is now getting up to 20 Lance Nectar. You're only seeing the first two, and he's already winning these fights. With a second and third wave coming in, Crackley is now truly at risk of a quick loss here. In a game where it would feel impossible. He has four relics in the HRE mirror, yet he's losing. Bombard is going to start getting repaired. Villages begin to get massacred, though. Needs more troops coming out. Cool. Where are the troops right now? <gasps> what? Oh my god. Why? Something that even a gold would do at this stage. Select all army and A click, but no. Core was missing 10 Lance Nectar. I guess the raids on the flanks did distract him well enough here, so he reacts to that, and instead of keeping the push going, Crackety gets a stay of execution, and all of a sudden, he has what he needs. Men at arms numbers are up. Hand cannoneers are coming in as the back line. Lance Nectar count is still decent, but now diving a cannon placement can get expensive fast. At least give me how to take that defense out, but it's going to come at a price. Several units should be going down. Crackety now prepping the defense. Against the full melee army, he has a cathedral with relics in it. Can you guess where this might be going? Hankan is actually being ignored. What? He goes straight for the bombard. Oh no. Frontline has at least been mopped up. Eight lands neck left over. Horsemen are going to have a breach to the backside. Great pullback there, though. Crackney just reacting to the horseman, but also getting away from the Lance Neck. I think this game is over. Cool. I mean, he's just got nothing left. Lance Count is about to get disintegrated. They only work when they've got something to absorb damage, not when they're absorbing it themselves. If you want that, pick the Gilded. I can't believe that. Cool. For a moment, it looked like he had it. I mean, he was definitely up against the ropes on this one. This was a difficult one to make work. But that miss rally, I think it hurt him. It would have still been an uphill battle even if the troops had arrived, but obviously he would have had a better chance. Now it feels too late. Crackety, now we've doubled the military force. Hand cannoneers continue to trickle in, and that's simply something Core can't really match here. Military Academy is at least on the way, but I believe, judging by the production rate, we already have that for Crackety. No! Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> now, on a delay, he queues up Lance Neck himself. Smart choice, right? Like, your opponent just burnt all of his gold. He can't rely on Lance now. He has to go to Men at Arms, Spearmen, Horsemen. These are all pretty easy targets for Mass Lansk. What an interesting game, though. I mean, I've got to give it to them, right? Like, it, it opened in a very entertaining way. I think it ended in a very entertaining way as well. That attempt by Core to overwhelm from behind, I mean, I respect it. He actually made it look a lot closer than it really ever should, but this is always the issue when you're up against in HRE. It's why I think Pal Swipe is too good of a landmark. You kill 20 villagers, even if you kill 20 here, right? If you can kill like 10, maybe, if that. Even if you kill 20, it doesn't matter. It's damage that immediately evaporates because of one landmark. 
now raised on the flanks. I mean, this is the point where Core's going to lose access to gold, right? He's already exhausted the gold quickly with this comp. And now, just with a, a pause on, on access, and a discovery on the other gold, I mean, that's it. No gold gathering equal no bueno in this game. It means you can only build men at arms and you're running them knowingly into hand cannoneers. Manganel play might have worked if he had someone to front line. Unfortunately, he has absolutely nothing. Core, are those villagers on your side or Krakenies? Because they just led him right to where he needs to be. The underbelly of the beast hit. Two mangoes get taken out. One at least survives, but the villagers most definitely will not. That is indeed Lance next, folks. And that is indeed going to be game because the moment the core sees what's happening here, he's going to want out. This is an absolute war crime. <laughs> well, it began with attempting to murder Kors villagers. That failed, but it will definitely end with a successful raid chopping down well over 20 eco from the orange HRE.